the, the, this presentation is really just a bit of a summary of some of the cases um, that I thought were pretty interesting that came up over um, the last year in family law. Um, there's uh, far more cases than we can possibly cover in an hour. So what I've done is I've kind of handpicked a few cases um, in property, in parenting, and in spousal maintenance. So I've picked two in each category that I found quite interesting or that I think um, are, are useful cases for you to consider in your practice. Um, but also um, what I like to say is these are really just case summaries. Uh, it is super important that you actually read the cases. There's always more meat to, um, meat on the bone than what we can present. Um, otherwise, I'd probably present one hour on just one case. Uh, the, the slides themselves are pretty text heavy, but I have done that so that you can uh, print them off, keep them um, handy as a bit of a handout and a case summary so that you can then use those as a guide when you're reading uh, the cases. Um, uh, Paula Tan has said, has asked, where can I get the handouts? I think Paula will, will provide those uh, uh, to you um, and it'll just essentially be a printout of this presentation. Um, if you have any questions um, as we go through, pop them in the chat as we're going through. Um, if I get a, a moment, I'll, I'll uh, if I can detract my attention to the chat, I'll try and answer some of those questions once we're finished talking about um, the specific case. Otherwise, I will do a quick review at the end. Hopefully, I have enough time to uh, get through the whole presentation. Uh, if we don't, um, then obviously you've got the summaries with you. So we'll get started. So uh, like I said, I have chosen two cases for property, two cases for parenting, and two cases for spousal maintenance to go through. And what I want you to get out of this session is to be, have a bit of an understanding and a summary of some of the um, important family law decisions made over the last 12 months. Uh, but mostly the reason we have an understanding of it is so that you're better placed to advise your clients on recent decisions of the court and some key issues that the court has been considering um, in family law, but also uh, to understand the practical implications of some of those important decisions. So I'll, I'll take you through some takeaways at the end of each um, discussion of each case. So if we get crack, cracking with the uh, first case, it's a case of Chibara and Gaber. This was a 2021 case. It's a property case. This one was interesting because it dealt with an interim property distribution, the consideration of partial distributions defeating final outcomes. I chose this because uh, in court um, at the moment, despite the, the mergers and the hope that the delays in the court system will reduce, uh, we're still seeing that some final hearings are taking up to two years and, and therefore interim property distributions um, are becoming uh, a much more important aspect and an issue that is uh, being litigated uh, more so where people are needing some financial assistance to get them from an interim proceeding to a final hearing. So in this particular case, um, the parties were married in May 1997. They were married overseas. They separated in 2017. So it was a significantly long marriage, 20 years. Mm -hmm. 